<laughs> hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So today I wanted to do my review of Autumn Crow High Fresh Hell by Cameron Cheney. I read this uh, in the month of September. I just finished it a little while ago and I wanted to make sure to, to have all of my thoughts put together and my head wrapped around everything before I jumped into the review of this one. I didn't want to do it too quickly. So I did actually force myself to drag this one out. I didn't want to binge it. I had originally thought, hey, I'm going to binge this and like read, in, read it in two days. And then I was like, no, because then it's going to be over and I won't be happy with that. So I'm going to let you guys know my thoughts about this book. And the other thing that I wanted to let you know, kind of just as a disclaimer a little bit, I guess, because of course everybody knows that Cameron is another fellow booktuber and horror tuber in the community, and he's also a friend. So I didn't want to just hop on here and say, oh, hey, this is the best thing I've ever read. Um, you know, all of this kind of stuff just because Cameron is my friend. So I did want to let you guys know that I am going to be, um, very honest about this book, what I thought about it, and I think Cameron would be uh, very appreciative of that as well. So these are my honest thoughts. I'm not bumping this book up just because Cameron is a friend and I want to help him promote it. Um, it's going to be real and I'm going to tell you guys all my thoughts. So let's get into this together. So just to give a little bit of a backstory about this book. So if you don't know, Cameron is also the author of Autumn Crow, the original Autumn Crow stories. So this is a short story collection that is perfect for Halloween. It is super creepy cozy. It has all the Halloween feels. It's perfect to sit down and snuggle up with a blanket on a Sunday afternoon with a cup of tea and just read through these stories. They're so fantastic. And Cameron writes creepy cozy very very well and uh, I have an undying love for this book. I love this book. It's a five star read. It's one of my favorites of all time. Again not because Cameron is a friend. I actually read this book before we even knew each other so um, this book is is the be all and end all in my opinion of Halloween reads. So basically he took these stories and created a whole like this is going to be the first book in a in a YA series based on Autumn Crow Valley. So Autumn Crow is a place in Ohio that's a fictional place based in Ohio and it's basically Halloween every day there. So for this book this is the first in a YA series based on the Autumn Crow stories and when I had done my review of the original Autumn Crow book I even said in that video that I think the idea of Autumn Crow and the high school and the backstory and everything could be made into a series. There was enough there to have it expanded out into its whole world. And I'm so happy that Cameron actually did that. He of course already had the idea in his head of doing it. And we've been waiting for a couple of years for this book so I was super happy to dive into it. And first of all, can we just look at this cover art? This is fantastic. So the co cover art is by Cameron Robique, who is also a horror author and uh, it's fantastic. And we had sneak peeks of the cover art, I think I, about a year and a half ago. And uh, we everybody has been waiting to get their paws on this one. So if you don't know anything about the synopsis, basically this follows a young girl named Bailey or a high school girl named Bailey. And throughout the summer, she's, she's going into her senior year and throughout the summer, she has been having dreams about this uh, blue-eyed boy. And he's not a, a good character. So she's been having nightmares and as they're going back on their first day of school, she realizes that this boy is actually at her high school. So it says, when Bailey returns to school in the fall, she is ho horrified to learn that the boy from her dreams is real and attending Autumn Crow High. Are Bailey's dreams a warning, some kind of premonition, or has the boy truly escaped her nightmares? Only time and murder will tell. And so that you know, that's all you need to know about this. So the, this book and the upcoming books in this series are written very much in the same vein as Point Horror and Fear Street and all of those wonderful vintage series that we loved when we were growing up. And Cameron, of course, is a lover of all of those series. He's read extensively in, in his vintage collections. And uh, so this was definitely going to be something for all of us who love horror from the 90s, the 80s and 90s and looking for that nostalgia feel. So I'm going to start basically with the things that I loved less about this book 
and move into the things that I loved the most about this book. So the first thing that was a little bit hard for me, and I don't know if anybody else found this, but I found that it took me a little while to shift my mind from the original Autumn Crow stories. Because like I said, the original Autumn Crow book is very creepy cozy and you know, very comforting and all of those sorts of things. I had had my mind set in this world of Autumn Crow and when I got to this book, which can be extremely brutal in places, this is definitely a, a horror book, it's definitely, uh, you know, for older kids or YA, um, it's definitely brutal in places. It had a massive body count and uh, there was a lot of murder, there was a lot of uh, slice and dice. Was that before or after? Be sliced and diced. And while I loved that, it was hard for me to kind of switch my brain from creepy cozy Autumn Crow into we're getting into the gritty Autumn Crow. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. It just took me a moment to kind of shift into wh what was going on in the story and it left me feeling a little bit dizzy. And that's just honestly how I felt. I don't know if anybody else experienced it. Um, and like I said, it wasn't a bad thing. It just took a moment for me to kind of switch my mindset. The other thing that I didn't love about this book, and it's very, very minor, very minor, and it's a two-parter. So one part is personal preference, and the other part is um, something that needs to be watched in the future. So uh, some of the language that was used, I found personally to be a little bit clunky. So for example, using anatomical body parts, like calling them by their anatomical name, uh, kind of made made the the language a little bit clunky for me. So instead of using Achilles tendon as was used in the book, I would have just called it a heel. <laughs> so like when I was reading, it was just weird to be reading about this slice and dice, and then all of a sudden you're talking about Achilles tendons or tracheas instead of like a heel or a throat. So that's honestly just my personal opinion, and that is a personal preference as well. But you know, I said I was going to be honest about it, so that was just something that I felt. The other part to that was, um, I know this book, I know Cameron spent a lot of time on this book, I know he was really diligent in making sure that it was well written and it was edited. So I did come across a spelling error in here and I snapped a picture of it. Um, I still have to send it to Cameron, but uh, really it shouldn't be any spelling errors. So, you know, those are minor things, I think. In the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about preferred language or like small errors like that, it's not horrible, but at the same time, like I know Cameron is a good writer and I know that he reads over his work, so really there shouldn't have been any errors. So those are the two things that I didn't love about this book. Um, and the first one just like I said, it had to take a little bit of a second for me to go from creepy cozy Autumn Crow right into like a Fear Street style book. So having said that, the nostalgia in this series, so getting into the things that I did like. So the nostalgia in this book, and I'm sure that's going to be in the subsequent books, was off the charts. And I know a lot of other people spoke about uh, the nostalgia in the Autumn Crow books, and like I said, Cameron is, is very well versed in 80s and 90s horror, and uh, you know, it had all of the wonderful things. We're talking about cassette tapes and Walkmans and... Um, you know, high school and letterman jackets and, and all of the things that we used to love out of the 80s and 90s. And it, it definitely was there. It was off the charts. The other thing that I loved uh, that was wound into that aspect were the Easter eggs for horror lovers. Like you could definitely see little snippets of movies and books that if you're a well-read horror lover you're gonna notice them and it was great and it, it had me smiling it really did so i loved that aspect and but i wanted to go deeper than that because i know a lot of people have said you know this is super nostalgic and if you love 80s and 90s horror you're gonna love this and i agree with that but this book i think was so much more so the first thing i think it was well written um, as a horror novel, 
but also as the beginning of the series and you could see as it was going on that this world was going to get bigger and bigger and making room for other things to happen in this series which was awesome the other thing like i said there was a huge body count in this there was a lot of slice and dice so you're definitely going to get your fill of you know the fear street and point horror and all the things that we used to love growing up but what i really loved about this book was Cameron's ability like his writing for one but his ability to write grief so there's a lot of grief going on in this book and uh it's something that also came through in the original Autumn Crow series or the original Autumn Crow stories as well Cameron can write emotion and write grief very very well there was actually a couple of spots towards the end of Autumn Crow High that I actually had to skim because I thought I was going to start to cry because it was just so it, it hit me really really hard and you could tell that Cameron really was into these characters like they weren't just you know just surface characters like he was really in there he really felt all the feels and I think he probably felt the emotion too with what was going on with these characters and uh, so that was probably my favorite thing that I enjoyed about this book is his writing and his ability to write that emotion and make it really, really deep. He just sucked you into this, you know, this whole world, this whole Autumn Crow world. And that's what I want. Like Buffy, you're sucked into Sunnydale, right? Um, Babysitter's Club, you're, you're sucked into Stony Brook. And you know, with Autumn Crow High, you're sucked into Ohio. You really, really are. And uh, so that was something that I really enjoyed. The other thing that I was worried about, <laughs> so when I was, you know, up to about 80 to 85% of this book, I was worried because when you start getting new things that are being introduced later in the story, I was like, how is he gonna bring all of this around? Because I hate ambiguity in my horror, I hate ambiguity in my in my reading, period. Unless something is wrapped around and tied up in a pretty little bow, or left on a really, really good a cliffhanger, I hate it. I hate any kind of ambiguity, and there was a lot going on here. We had stuff going on with Bailey, we had stuff going on with her best friend, we had backstories, we had creatures and other characters, and like there was this whole world and I was like, is he gonna be able to bring all of this around? And I was really, really thrilled that at the end, it really did get wrapped up around. Everything was explained well, everything, you know, even if it was left ambiguous, you know it's gonna continue in the next book and you have a full understanding of what's going on. So I wasn't left with any questions because during the book I was like, I don't know, like I got an awful lot of questions going on here. Um, but it really did get, get tied up at the end of the book. So I have to say overall, uh, yes, Autumn Crow High was worth the hype. It was worth the wait. I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, you know, there was very little that I didn't like about it. I went through the things, you know, at the beginning of this video that one, something that I had to get used to and another one that was very, very minor in things that I didn't like. So definitely solid four star for this book. I can't wait to read the rest of them. And uh, I know that Cameron's writing is just going to get better and he's fantastic at you know just doing character development and giving them depth and giving them stories it's it's not superficial writing and that's something that i really really enjoy about him and about you know both of these books that i've read so if you haven't uh taken a turn into autumn crow valley yet make sure to do so go out uh these are available on amazon so go over to cameron's channel he'll have all of the links there uh for where these are available and uh, because you know even if you didn't grow up in the 80s and 90s. These are just good horror books. They're really, really good. So uh, that's my thoughts on, you know, the original stories versus this new one. And I can't wait to see what Cameron comes up with next. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky, everybody. Bye. <laughs>